Now coming to different types of anemia. The first and foremost is the sickle cell disease. The normal hemoglobin, normal RBC is by concave. You can say discoid, this shape or discoid shape. That shape is important for hemoglobin to be carried by the RBC according to the physiology of oxygen transport. But in sickle cell, it assumes a sickle cell shape and your hemoglobin becomes abnormal. What was like hemoglobin A gets converted into hemoglobin S, yes, that is hemoglobin sickle cell. And this sickle cell is an hereditary hemoglobinopathy with associated vasoocclusive episode that is commonly responsible for your complication. Here, the sickle cell clumps and occludes the blood supply to that particular organ. So, you might have a vasoocclusive episode. Now, coming to the difference between trait and disease. What is sickle cell trait and what is disease? You have a parent who are carrier of hemoglobin S. When you receive the normal hemoglobin from both fashion, you do not have any blood disorder. But if you receive hemoglobin S from one parent, you become a sickle cell trait. Here, there is hemoglobin S and hemoglobin A and the patient is heterozygous, but the patient will have less severe clinical course with moderate anemia. There is usually no health consequences or symptom. But if you receive hemoglobin S from both parents, you become a sickle cell disease. Here, homozygous for hemoglobin S alone and you have a very high risk for morbidity and your life expectancy comes down. This impacts patient health and causes many symptoms. Your preoperative assessment in sickle cell disease should focus on organ dysfunction and recent pattern of any acute exacerbation, whether any vasoocclusive crisis happened. The patient may have chronic kidney disease and there may be loss of renal concentration ability. So, a lot of urine comes out and the patient may be prone for dehydration. Apart from that, the patient may have splenomegaly, pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary infarction due to vaso occlusion, cardiovascular disease and heart failure. The patients are prone for infection due to splenic infarction. And what are the risk factors for vaso exclusive complication? Recent increase in hospitalization, elderly patient, pre-existing infection, dehydration and pulmonary disease. These are all the various factors which increases the vasoocclusive crisis. Your preoperative examination focus on frequency, severity and pattern of vasoocclusive crisis. You should e evaluate the degree of cardiac, pulmonary, renal and central nervous system damage. ECG for cardiac evaluation, chest x-ray for pulmonary and you should do a blood sampling for complete blood count and creatinine concentration. Additional testing include echocardiogram and arterial blood gas. The objective of any blood transfusion is to reduce the proportion of abnormal hemoglobin as well as increase the normal hemoglobin. In short minor procedure, for example, you are doing a biopsy or a myringotomy, no preoperative prophylactic transfusion is required. If it is an intermediate risk procedure, you have to do a prophylactic transfusion to raise the hemoglobin greater than 10 gram per deciliter so that no adverse effect happens. In case of high risk surgery like a major cardiovascular or an intracranial procedure, here you have to follow a more aggressive approach. You should reduce the hemoglobin S concentration to less than 30 percent. Not only that, you have to maintain the normal hemoglobin level to greater than 
10 gram per deciliter. Decision to transfuse should be in consultation with the hematologist familiar with this disease or a primary treating physician of that particular disorder. If the patient is managed by specialist sickle cell service, it is always better to liaise with that team before surgery. The patient surgical admission should be planned in such a way that you minimize the preoperative dehydration. That is very important because it might precipitate a crisis. Here, you can minimize the fasting period and schedule the case as first in the early morning period.